I figured out that there's one key skill that comes up on so many problems that if you can't, oh, I'm gonna switch the board in a second. If you can't do a problem like that, 2n plus 8 equals 16, then you're toast. Like we need to get that fixed right now if you are not sure how to solve 2n plus 8 equals 16. Now, I know most of you do know how to solve that, but please start with that one. And then I'll show you how there's just a lot of variations on a two-step equation. Copy that down if you haven't already. I know, super easy, but that's where we start. You haven't moved, written, moved your hand yet, it's kind of one to tell. I'm glad you can do it in your hand, but next time write the problem down to you. Or is it there and I couldn't see it? All right, we're gonna start with minus eight, minus eight, because, you know, just like on the AP tests, I don't know if you know this, but on the free response part, you get one point for the answer. On a math test, one point for the answer, and then all the rest of the points are for the work. So a typical question has nine points, only one point for the answer. So show your work. And then the next step is divide by two, divide by two, and then n equals four. Raise your hand if you had n equals four. Cool, so you all have a good chance at this. Now, what if, I'm just gonna make a very subtle little change to this. Absolute value of 2n minus 8 equals 10. I changed a couple little things. Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll read it to you again. Absolute value of 2n. You know how to write that. Absolute value of 2n minus 8 equals 10. This is just the same. Okay, one kid last hour, though, thought you split it into two equations right away. You do not. You start by adding 8. Everybody do that. See how it's kind of like a two-step equation again? It's just got this one extra little thing. The absolute value bars. But that two-step equation, so important. All right. Do you know what to do next? The split thing? Into two equations. What's the first one? Um, 2n equals and then right away, the other one is so like it. Say it right away. 2n equals yes, the only difference is that negative. There you go. So we'll end up with two answers. Hang a little bit. If that's your phone, could you turn it off? I won't like, penalize you for having taking it out to turn it off. Thank you. Just make it so it doesn't make noise every time you get a text. Okay, we're dividing both sides by 2, n equals 9. Dividing by, by 2, n equals negative 9. Notice two answers for this one. You guys get how to do that kind? All right, so that's like a two-step equation again. It's just got this split part to it. And it splits into two equations. They aren't even two-step equations anymore. They're just one-step equations. All right. But then there's a kind where there's a less than sign in it. And let's see if you can handle this little twist. Less than or equal to. Notice, not equal to, less than or equal to. All right, in a second. I'm going to ask you to talk to the kid next to you about step one. And more importantly, most people know you're going to subtract three. That's easy. But what happens next? Because it's really, really important. And about half of you are going to forget something. On the second step, watch out. All right. There is a person next to you. In row one and two, this almost, almost everybody has a person next to them. Only one person doesn't. These two rows, everybody has a person straight across. Oh, one person doesn't. In that case, would you guys compare? Thank you. I will be your partner because right now you don't have one. You two guys compare, and you three compare. Talk to each other. See what you've got. Let's job. Let me just get it to here before I answer questions.
You're right. Ask that kid behind you. Okay. Damien, the key thing. These cancel, but what's the key thing that I forgot already? When I divided by negative, what was supposed to happen? Do you know? Yes, yeah, switch the sign. This was a less than. It's supposed to change to a greater than. The minute you divide this, this by a negative, that sign switches because negatives are the opposite of. And that's how you can think of it. It's we're just changing it to the opposite sign. And then n is greater or equal to 4. See how that's just a two-step equation again? Step 1, step 2, and step 2 had that little negative, so you switch the sign. All right, I'm going to do one more like that because that's so key. Negative 4n plus 10 equals negative 12. But let's make it greater or equal to. Copy that one down. Two-step equation again. It's pretty much a whole bunch of two-step equations with little twists. Like, oh, but now it's a less than. Now, if you can handle all of that, you'll probably get a C. And that's, for some of you, good enough. You're going to be able to pass this class if you keep up Cs. But for some of you, you're going to want more than a C. And you may recall that I said that there'd be five extra problems. And each one you get, you get five more percent. So out of those five hard problems, you can add on a few more five percents. So that'd be awesome. Go from a 75 to an 85. Maybe you can add on three of the hard problems. Now you're up to a 90. All right, so we're subtracting 10 from both sides. Easy peasy, two-step equation. Now this stumps some people, but you'll have a calculator if you bring one. I'm just curious, how many of you actually have one today? That's way more than last time, sweet. Please, for your own sake, bring one tomorrow. I cannot promise you a calculator because I don't have enough for everybody, so I can't promise it to anybody. So have a calculator. If you need to, put it like a dot on the back of your hand. You'll be like, why is there a dot on my hand? Oh, yeah, I should put my calculator in my backpack. All right, this is negative 22. I can do it in my head. I know some of you can. Then I'm dividing both sides by a negative, and that should be like, oh, wait, on this guy, that's important because n now switches to less than or equal to, notice. And then the negatives cancel, and can you just leave it as 22 over 4? No, actually, because it can be reduced. The reason I know is they're both even. If you don't know how to reduce, you better learn it by this test, because I can't just leave this and act like it's right. I would change it to 2 times 11. You can use a calculator to figure out 2 times what, you know? And then this is 2 times 2, and look, anybody knows that 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 11 is 22, you, or at least with a calculator you can. And that cancels, and the answer is 11 over 2. What if you just want to divide them and get a decimal? It's okay. Dividing and getting a decimal is okay. In that case, I can do 11 divided by 2 in my head. Half of 11, 5.5. And yes, decimals are okay on this test. Yep. You should know how to reduce fractions, but decimals are okay on this test. Okay, so how'd that happen again? It was a two-step equation. Everybody should have known to subtract 10 because that's the opposite of plus 10. And then when we divided by this negative 4 because it was times, when we divided by the negative, this needed to get simplified down and this sign had to switch. All right, now uh, I have one more like category and that's the hard problems. Uh, everything we've done so far, if you can do that kind, which I know most of you can, you got yourself a C, but I know most of you would really rather have a B, and that's just going to mean harder equations. So I'm going to put three harder problems on the board, but the first one I'm just going to say in words, and you have to make an equation, because writing out like five sentences is such a pain in the butt, and you don't want to write it either. So I'm going to write it out. I'm going to write down the key numbers. You have to put it in an equation. Okay, imagine the real world and you've got a serious plumbing problem at your house. Like, you know because 
there is water spurting out of a pipe and you're like, I don't know how to fix it. At least you should know where the shutoff is at your house for the water. Because it's actually kind of crazy. If a pipe is like spurting water out and you can't shut it off, your house is going to flood by the time the, the plumber gets there. There is a shutoff at your house where you can just take a big valve thing and go, Bruh! and it just stops all the water to the house. All right, so you stop all the water, and all of a sudden you're like, God, I got I to gotta get somebody to fix this. You call a plumber. They're not cheap. They charge 150 per hour. And they also charge something called a trip charge. And the reason they do that is sometimes you, they come out there and they can fix it in 10 minutes. And they don't want to only charge you like a dollar fifty, okay? So they have a trip charge, which means in addition to their hourly rate, they charge you another hundred bucks. They're gonna get a hundred bucks then. If they come to your house, at least they're gonna get a hundred bucks. And that's a trip charge. Now you probably shouldn't tell the the plumber this because, like, you know, you don't want them to charge you the max, but all you have is 500 bucks. So you, you're like, it's just a leaky pipe. You should be able to fix that in like an hour, I would think. So you think you got enough money, but $500 is your max that you can spend. So when he gets there, you might be able to ask him, how long do you think this is going to take? And then you can know whether or not you have enough money. So 500 is the max. There's an equation for that. Write that equation. And then here's the two other hard questions that are unrelated. There's that kind. And there's that kind where they just have a whole bunch of steps and there's variables on both sides and kind of a complicated equation. There are the three typical hard type questions that I want to practice today. I'm going to pause while you give those a try. Okay, we needed to spend a few minutes on these for the kids who want A's and B's. Uh, because this is how you get a 75 moved up to like an 85 or a 90. Maybe even a 95 if you uh, really kick some butt on the hard ones. So it's going to be 150 per hour. That's the one that gets timed by some variable. You could use X, you could use H. I'm using H for hours. But they also charge you 100 bucks. And that's not per hour, it's just 100 bucks flat. Max is 100. Now think about this. Do you want this cost to go bigger than 500? No, you want to go less than. And I'd be fine with less than or equal to. Either one is okay on this because clearly you want it to be less than 500 bucks. Technically, it could be equal. Unless the problem says it can be equal, you could have just said less than. All right. How many of you figured out the equation? Raise your hand if you did. I've done a ton of practice on those, so I hope that you got that. That can be done. Now, to actually get the point on the test, you would have to solve it. So we'd subtract 100 and divide by 150. Once again, two-step equation. See? Start by subtracting this and by dividing by that. All right. This one. I personally would definitely simplify the inside before I squared everything. 3 6 is like 1 half. And we all know it's negative because there's a negative there. Notice I'm not squaring until later. If I were you, I would wait till later. X to the fourth over X, that means there's X to the third on the top. Why? You can subtract the exponents, but it's dangerous because if you get a negative one, you better not leave the answer of it as a negative exponent. You'd have to move it to the bottom. This one does not come out negative, though, so it's just X to the third. And then the Y squared, there's nothing to cancel it. It's just there. Am I done? No, I haven't squared it yet. So now I take negative 1 squared, and that's 1. 2 squared is 4. x to the third squared, this kind, you multiply. 
x to the 6. And then y squared squared, y to the 4th. There's your final answer. Last hour, that was the most missed question. I'm curious, who in here got that one right? <laughs> okay, now it's either that I did it wrong, which is possible, or, oh, you guys got it right? Okay, awesome. Or you guys could use some practice on that. Now, it's, it's, all you do here is you think, if I can't do that kind, I guess I don't get that 5%. But let's try one more like that in a minute. But here's, uh, this one I have hope that most people got it right. Negative 6 minus 2x. Some people screw up the sign right there. Minus 5. All I'm doing is copying it down now. Copy, copy, copy. Okay. Now, this and this can go together. They are called like terms. So negative 2x comes down, and those two together make negative 11. Now, this one freaks people out because they're like, they're both a 2x, but they're not the same. Negative 2x is not the same as 2x. So you get rid of the smaller one. This one is smaller. So you add 2x to both sides. And now I've got negative 11 equals 4x minus 10. Those are just copy it down, copy it down. And what do you know? Another two-step equation. I was telling you, that's the one thing you got to be able to do. Because, like, every problem turns into that at the end. Now I'm going to add 10. Add 10. This is negative 1 if you know how to use a calculator. And at the end, it's divide by 4. Divide by 4. Those cancel. X is negative one-fourth. Who had negative one-fourth? All right. Now, that was a tough one, but yet I had half of you get it. If you're careful on the test, you can do that one. You can. Absolutely. It's a very doable question. Just a lot of little chances to make little mistakes. All right. On the one where only two kids got it right, let's do one more practice like that. Make this one negative this time. All of that squared. I think what some of you did wrong last time was you didn't simplify first. That's a fraction. You can reduce it. These are unhappy where they are. Move them where they'll be happy. And there's one Y on top and four on the bottom. Do you know how to cancel that off? Once you get that done, then square it. I'm going to pause for a minute while you give the chance to try this. At least the starting on the inside. Could you get the inside right? It was 1 over 4. If you have trouble reducing that kind, again, a calculator can't save you on this. See, if you have 3 twelfths and you don't know how to do this, you're going to get a decimal and you can't put a decimal inside here. A decimal inside the fraction isn't going to work. So how would you do this? Could you have thought this 12 is like 3 times 4? You could have done that. And then these 3s could, could cancel. That's not that bad. See how the 4 is on the bottom? It is. I'll get that negative in a sec. All right. And yes, it is negative. And now this is unhappy where it is. So you bring it to the bottom. So there better be an x to the third on the bottom of yours. And now just looking at the y's, there's only one on top and four on the bottom. This is just the same as if it was this. And so then one of them cancels and there's still a bunch of y's left on the bottom. There it is. Now it's not been squared yet, but that's what you should have had before it got squared. I can tell this is the hardest question for a lot of people, but, but don't give up on it. You could have, honestly, for somebody, somebody who's good at this, like I've done it a while, that's one of the easiest questions on the test for me. So like once you get good at them all equally, this isn't that hard. You just got to know where to move negative exponents to the other side, how to reduce fractions, and what to do when you got a few more of the x's or y's on the top or the bottom. Okay, now I got to square everything. What is 1 squared? It is 1. 
What is four squared? It is 16. And when you square a negative, it does go away because it's like negative four times negative four. All right, and then this x to the third gets squared, so it obviously can't be x to the third. It's x to the what? Six, very good. And then the other one also is to the third, so it'll also be to the sixth, and there's your answer. Who pulled that one off? Way more people this time, this is good. We got it up to like four times as many people as last time. Okay, I know some of you that might be a bridge too far, and that's okay. You don't get that one right, you just don't get that 5%. If I can get everybody to a base minimum C, and then hopefully a couple more right, you'll be gonna be. All right, and now you have a bunch of time, and here is the practice test. I made this up this morning. Uh, I made it specifically because it's smaller than the actual test, but it's got all the important stuff on it, so it won't take you as long as the normal test. Uh, and I'm gonna give you a partner to work with. Uh, there's gonna be a few moves and switches and stuff. Uh, and so I'm gonna start over here. To slide next to each other. So uh, I'm going to stop the video here, but anybody who missed today, uh, today is the last day before the test. And so what I'm going to tell them to do after we're done with this uh, is to check it against the key and make sure if there's anything you still don't understand uh, to practice those. There is one other extra practice if you want it worksheet. You can. It's actually called that. Uh, and that would be smart to get ready for this first big test. That's all I got for you for today.